can't no. tell. I know. <laughs> We've got this lovely new thing. Did I not <coughs> User error. User error, which I will say before I turn my mic on. Thank you, everybody. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Della Wells. I'm the rector. And we are joined today by our, um, I think, our most distant regular member, Roger Bullard, my classmate from Yale Divinity School, who will be our preacher today. But it's also just great to have Roger back again for our annual meeting, because he is a regular parishioner and part of us, and yet not often with us in person. Greetings to all of you online. Greetings to Mom, Mary Sidney, David and Lorraine, and, and Philip Ragsdale, and I know many others. So glad you're all here, and this is amazing to see you all here today. Our worship begins on page one of your bulletin or on page 355 of your books of common prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God. We say together our collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. We pray together the collect of the day. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. 
visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. <laughs> then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. And therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God. And he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. And then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. And so Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And then Eli said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, the son of Nazareth, a son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? 
Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael, Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. It is a gift and a blessing to be invited to speak with you this morning um, in this warm day in Newport. My son traveled from Denver to Vail yesterday and it was 10 degrees below zero when he got there. So thank God for your warmth. <laughs> I hope what I'm about to say this morning will make your ears tingle. In the name of the one holy and indivisible Trinity, amen. <clears throat> and Philip calls to Nathaniel, come and see. Turn back the clock with me to the winter of 1882. A very young girl in Alabama is plunged into total darkness. At the age of 19 months, her sight is stolen from her. She descends into darkness, loses her sight, and can no longer speak. And then, four years later, at the age of six, She's embraced by the love and healing of a gifted teacher. Guided by her teacher, she starts the long climb back from darkness into light, from isolation to friendship to comradeship, knowledge and love. Thus begins the faith journey of the amazing woman, Helen Keller. <clears throat> In these short, dark days of Epiphany, we are invited to come and see. We are called to discover who is this Son of Man. Last week, the three Magi responded to that call. They traveled for many days, for weeks, for months perhaps, following the star that beckons them. They follow the star that calls them, come and see. Jesus calls Philip and Nathaniel to a journey of faith. Follow me, come and see. Nathaniel's hesitant, but so often those called immediately find reasons to object. Moses protests, I'm a terrible public speaker. Jeremiah says, I'm just too young. The boy Samuel must be called from his bed three times before he recognizes the voice of the Lord. And yet each does accept the call. Samuel will go on to become judge, kingmaker, prophet, and priest. Like Nathaniel and Philip, each of these go forth to bear witness to the glory of God. Nathaniel doesn't understand Philip's invitation. He gets it wrong. So often, our lived experience blinds our ability to see. Mark Twain's advice reminds us, reminds Nathaniel, it's what you know for sure that ain't so, that's what gets you into trouble. 
In biblical times, Nazareth was a low-income zip code. It was like East St. Louis, South Chicago, or modern-day Detroit. Nathaniel's instinctive reaction is, can anything good come out of Nazareth? The three magi, those who travel from far away, they see. The three eastern kings come. Following that star, they are led to the home where the child is lying. Presenting their treasure, they recognize the infant Christ child as Emmanuel, God with us. The Gospel of John, from which we read today, invites us to come and see. And in seeing, we shall understand who this Jesus is. Jesus tells Nathanael, if you think it was amazing that I could know you from beneath that fig tree, just wait and see. I'll show you even greater, even greater things. And so he does. Through the first 12 chapters, of John's Gospel, Jesus offers us seven amazing signs that point beyond themselves, that point directly to Jesus' relationship with God. The first of these, the one we all know so well, is turning water into wine at the wedding in Cana. To the casual viewer, converting 180 gallons of water into wine just sort of seems like a magic trick but for those who have eyes to see, it reveals the glory and abundance of God revealed in Jesus Christ. Standing close by as witnesses, the disciples understand now and believe in Jesus. A few days later, Jesus shows us another amazing sign. He's approached by a royal official desperately seeking health for his son who lies near death. Jesus is hesitant. He suspects that the official sees Jesus simply as a trickster, a street juggler, a miracle worker. So Jesus pushes back. Do you have to see signs and wonders to really believe? Well, desperate, the royal official presses on with his passionate plea. So Jesus relents. Go, Jesus says your boy will live. The official rushes home. There he discovers that his son has recovered. Comparing their watches, he and his family calculate that the boy's recovery begins at the instant Jesus spoke. Now they see, now they understand who this Jesus is. God gives us space. God allows time for our faith to mature from seeing then understanding, and finally believing. And now Jesus draws back the curtain to reveal who this Son of God, who is this Son of Man. Drawing on the example of Jacob's dream in the book of Genesis, Jesus discloses his human purpose. Jacob dreams of a ladder that connects heaven and earth upon which the angels ascend and descend. Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus is our, is our ladder, our two-way connection with God. Jesus bears our prayers and thanksgivings heavenward to the divine light. In response, heavenly blessings, comfort, and insight descend to us down the rungs of the heavenly ladder. The events of this past year test our faith. Where do we find our God amidst the terror and physical violence witnessed in the horrors of the Middle East conflict? Where is God shrouded by the darkness of hate directed against those of the Jewish faith towards MAGA extremists or those of the far left? How do we find our way out of this darkness? How do we find our way back to the light? Helen Keller is our example of hope. Helen writes in her autobiography, 
Have you ever been at sea in a dense fog, on a great ship groping toward the shore, not knowing where or how near the harbor is? Light, give me light as my soul's wordless cry, wordless cry. I sense approaching footsteps. I stretch out my hand. Is it my mother? No, I'm caught up and drawn close in the arms of my new teacher. I'm embraced in the arms of the one who comes to reveal all things to me. And thus Helen concludes, I came up out of Egypt and stood before Sinai. The power divine touched my spirit. It was the power of sight so that I beheld many wonders. And from the sacred mountain I heard a voice which said, knowledge is love and light and vision. Courage, take courage, cries the psalmist this morning, as we seek to find light out of darkness. O Lord, you have searched me out and you know me. You know my resting and my rising up. You know my every thought from far off. When the darkness covers me and the light is overcome by night, I call upon you. I know darkness is not dark to you, my night shall become as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. Jesus calls us, come and see. Amen. Standing as you are able, we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found in your bulletins on page four. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People are Form 6 and can be found on page 5 of your church bulletin. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. We pray for Zai, our mayor, Dan, our governor, Joe, our president, and for this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. O God of all justice and peace, we cry out to you in the midst of the pain and trauma of violence and fear which prevails in the Holy Land. Be with those who need you now in these days of suffering. We pray for people of all faiths, 
Jews, Muslims, and Christians, for all people of the land. While we pray to you, O Lord, for an end to the violence and establishment of peace, we also call for you to bring justice and equity to the peoples. Guide us into your kingdom where all people are treated with dignity and honor as your children. For to all of us, you are our heavenly Father. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Della, our rector, Nicholas, our bishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and his church. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Southeast Asia. In the cycle of prayer of the Episcopal Diocese of Rhode Island, we pray for the Center for Reconciliation and all who seek to be reconcilers in our state, nation, and world. In the Emmanuel Church cycle of prayer, we pray for the Stewardship Committee. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we ask your prayers for Dion, Ellie, Ash, Bill, Vanda, Brian, Liz, Lisa, Rachel, Tall, Bobby, Carol, Annie, Deb, Jimmy, Greg, Michael, our presiding bishop, Callie, Michael H., Jill, Katie, Timmy, Charlie, Susan, Teresa, Gloria, Robert, Alan, Caitlin, Jason and family, Kathleen, Michael, Pete, Phil, Janet, Tom, Ed, Faye, Susan, Jane, Heidi, and a just and peaceful resolution of the conflict in the lands of the three faiths called holy. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O, our, o God, our King. And we praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another with a sign of God's peace. Peace, Raj. So glad you're here. Peace. Peace, gang. Peace, peace. All right, you peace lovers. If you've greeted one another, please have a seat. We have just a few things today. First, I want to specially greet um, all of those who are online joining us because we have our annual meeting, as everybody knows, right after this service. And so we'll go into the library and join up with our friends who can't be here but are with us now on Zoom. So those of you who are on Zoom now, Ed and Faye, for example, are not here today. And Ed and Faye, good grief, there are saints among us for the year of 2022. Remember, we celebrated them last year, and uh, their, their efforts have just been amazing in the church. They're, they're with us all the time, and they couldn't be here for this annual meeting. So we know you are saints among us, Ed and Faye. And we're glad you're here. Ed's um, taking care. They're taking care in advance of Ed's surgery on January 19th. Um, we also are remembering today our first 
Lillian G. Hargrove Award winner, Bobby Gaines, who um, wasn't expecting me to mention his name. <laughs> Bobby was, was, we renamed the award last year at the annual meeting to recognize our um, current constellation of saints and, and people we recognized. It had been the Bertha Butts Award, Deaconess Bertha Butts Award, and she was very, very important to Emmanuel Church over many years. And Lil Hargrove kind of stepped into those shoes later on. And so we renamed the award, and Bobby was the inaugural winner for all of the grace he shows all the time, adapting ridiculously well to all of the whims of, of every new priest who comes through here, right? So Bobby helps me wash my hands with soap and water, which we picked up during the pandemic because the bishop asked us to do that. And it reminds me of, of East African hospitality and reminds me what we're doing here. Um, and so Bobby has adapted easily to that and has just been really lovely. So all of you be thinking, you know, listen out for who our next award winners will be. Um, those of you who, I know everybody's read the annual report cover to cover, word one to word 100 million, um, but you know you get that in the link in your constant contact. If anybody really can't read it online or print it, let us know afterwards and we'll print one for you. We'll get one printed here uh, to take home, but you don't, you don't need to have it in front of you during, during the meeting. Um, and those of you on Zoom, please again look for your Zoom link in constant contact. That's how you connect up in the, in the other room. Is there, yeah. I thought I saw you put it in constant contact. Where is it? In the realm announcement that you In the realm announcement also. In the realm announcement to the whole parish. So if you didn't get it there, but. We'll do that. We'll do that. Anything else I forgot? Anything anybody wonders? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
Standing as you are able, our worship continues on page 361 of your books of common prayer with Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ 
your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us take the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God feed on God in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
We say together in the posture of reverence of your choice that is comfortable for you, the post-communion prayer found in your bulletins and on page 365 of your books of common prayer. Eternally God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
in peace, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Um, you want to do the prayer? You want to do the prayer? Sorry? How do you want to handle the agenda? Do you want me to start? Um, it's up to you. I, I'm fine either way. Okay. I'll do the prayer. You do the necrology. Okay. Perfect. Yeah.